the more successful you are at what you're doing, the further up this drug food chain you're going to go. Is that a bit, of a, a bit of a concern? The more successful you are, the more trouble you could be in. I'm aware of it and need to remain so. Some of our, our cases, our investigations, have involved the international drug trade. Uh, we had one investigation in particular which was pivotal in the arrest of the second in command of one of the largest drug trafficking gangs in Africa and indeed in Europe. That was the, the Mamalela gang and it was uh, a woman from Kenya or something? Yeah, la lady from Kenya, very powerful, supplying drugs to Ireland, UK, Holland, France and most of Africa. Her second in command has been arrested by the German authorities in Kenya on foot of a Seychelles investigation. And that is a direct result of our work. You know, so I, you have to be conscious of the fact that we're making people lose money and people do not like to lose money. The guy's over there by the wall being um, spoken to by Niall. He's sitting down. I can see him shaking his head already. Tell me, um, does this belong to you? No, no. It's the official vehicle. No. It's the truck I work in. No, 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 my friend. No camera. I don't need camera. Yeah. Yeah. He's, 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 very, he's very worried. Yeah, he's shaking there. So. We just need to get this going fast because people settle very quickly. Yeah. You know? You need to get them all the nervous, yeah. I presume, yeah. too. At this point, we haven't found any drugs or any suspected drugs. So we don't really have anything to hold him on. But he doesn't know that just yet. So we, we know we will interview him. And uh, if we don't get anything from that, if he's not cooperative, we most likely will have to release him. After an hour of intensive questioning and with the prospect of having to let him go, Niall and the team made a breakthrough. After 12 hours of running around like headless chickens, thinking this story was possibly going nowhere, it, um, it turns out that the guy they picked up has been turned. He's admitted picking up the drugs in the post office. We are on our way now to the apartment where they apparently are. And uh, there's a team full of agents in the car in front of us and we're going to uh, to film the pickup. In return for cutting a deal, the suspect was prepared to lead the agency straight to the package. There's something, something wrong in it. Yeah. Something illegal in it. Yes. Okay, you know there's something illegal in it, right? Okay, you are being arrested for possession of con what we suspect is controlled drugs. So I feel sorry for I don't know why. Can do. The package contained $75,000 worth of heroin. That's more than three years' wages over here. He says he did it simply because he needs the money. He's, he's broke, he's got a family to rear, and for no other reason. He claims it's the first time he's done it. What will happen now, we will attempt to do a, a controlled delivery. And at this point, he's cooperating with us uh, to effect that controlled delivery, which will be to the person who he claims has asked him to collect these items. This will stand to him? This in. absolutely will stand to him. Okay. Yes. The Irish are well known for being versatile and resourceful. Working on the international stage has never been a problem, but this is different. These guys have been hand-picked to help rebuild the entire justice department of a sovereign, independent state. That's a lot of responsibility. And with responsibility comes power, and with power comes scrutiny. Niall Scully and Declan Barber have been labeled by some as nothing more than hired mercenaries. Both the Seychelles and the international media have reported on accusations that Scully and Barber have been involved in phone hacking, embezzlement, surveillance and bugging. Newsflash. Irish cops and Seychelles involved in financial piracy and kidnapping, according to allegations. Men say Seychelles kidnaps for ransom. The men claim in federal court that they were kidnapped by Irish mercenaries working for the Seychelles government 
and threatened with trumped-up drug and money laundering charges that would have carried a 10-year prison sentence. And there's a lot more than this. Well, I think the whole private contracting industry has become a sexy story over the last 10 or 15 years because people wonder where it's going. And I think in countries like the Seychelles, it has generated a lot of headlines for a number of different reasons. First of all, why Irish? Why Irish contractors? I mean, people would have expected American, maybe French. So there was the interest in why Irish guys were going out there doing this type of work. And I think secondly, whenever you have foreign contractors that come into a country providing a service, an expert service, that's going to impact on domestic policy, both in the short term or the long term, it's going to attract attention. There's been various allegations in the papers about the Irish guys that have been here. How do you view these allegations? I think you need to take it with a pinch of salt where the information is coming from, number one. I draw the distinction between local press and then press that's connected politically. Now, we're guilty of that in the Seychelles. Um, the governing party has its own, own newspaper, which likes to distort information a certain way. And the opposition parties have their own newspapers as well. Um, and they like to go the opposite. So somewhere in between the both, there's the truth. Now, as far as assassinations and disappearances and so on today, I think on those kind of reports, uh, things are sensationalized, and it's um, to make score political points. We knew when we would be upsetting certain people, particularly the criminal types, we were going to get some kickback. But nonetheless, you know, when you see pretty lies, blatant lies being printed and told about you, it, it is annoying. It is extremely annoying. But I suppose we made a conscious decision not to respond. It, not to give it any credibility, not you know, going to yeah. uh, engage with it. We've been targeted, you know, in Seychelles. They've used it in, in New York in terms of negative publicity. But the most disappointing aspect for me has been that there was negative and completely false publicity propagated in Ireland. You know, and typically this would be, say, a case lodged and never served. Our professional reputations in Ireland were called into question. You know, all of the military and the Garda guys working here and uh, it, it made me really angry. It was a real negative. But the Irish presence has not just attracted media attention. It has also divided opinion among the locals here. It's brought a lot, a lot of discontent on the ground because uh, people generally feel, and then it, it is a general perception, that a lot of qualified and highly skilled Seishawa are being marginalized because of the politics of the situation. And I think therein lies the, the certain reticence or perhaps what is perceived as a, as a hostility towards, towards foreign nationals uh, because people feel that they are taking our jobs. That's probably how the Irish are being seen in the police force at the moment. You're there to do a job, to be effective, but you're a farmer. Yes, and, and, and that is difficult. It is difficult. And on one hand, people, some people may be unhappy, and, uh, but in reality, there are very few people who will do the job. And that, that is a fact. The president of Seychelles and this government has always said, well, we want to get things done efficiently. And uh, we should base it on the fact that we need to get these things done. Results. And often we do need external expertise. The nationality of that expertise doesn't matter. Even after a week, I could see that the Seychelles is a country trying to get its house in order. In 2008, it received a loan from the IMF to deal with its debt crisis. Since then, the FIU has been tackling money laundering, while the NDEA has been battling with the war against drugs. On the surface, things couldn't be more different to Ireland. But the Seychelles are broke, the IMF are in, unemployment, corruption, you name it. Sound familiar? But they have one big problem that we don't have to worry about, Somalia. Or to be more specific, Somalian pirates.